William Balthazar Rose was born in England in 1961. As a child, he began to draw and paint. The artist studied in the United States at the University of California, Berkeley, and later at Princeton, graduating not only in art, but also architecture. Rose has lived for several years in Monte Santa Maria Tiberina. Slow food qua a Monte Santa Maria Tiberina c'ha uno dei suoi punti d'appoggio perché in accordo con l'amministrazione comunale della regione Umbria nel palazzo Borbon del Monte ha sede il centro nazionale di documentazione e studi della cucina popolare CEDOCUP. Fra l'altro Slow Food collabora col comune che gestisce questo bellissimo palazzo. In questo palazzo vengono fatte normalmente delle mostre e quest'anno eh, l'amico eh, William Baldas Rose ci ha proposto di fare questa bellissima mostra che ha, ha messo in contatto addirittura Slow Food con la sua vena artistica e con l'amministrazione comunale. Uno dei soggetti principali, come l'autore stesso ci dice, è quello di ritrarre in varie situazioni pose i cuochi. E quando si parla di cuochi non si può parlare di slow food, anche perché il cuoco qua diventa progetto culturale, non è uno spadellatore televisivo, come ormai si vede da tutte le parti, ma è un soggetto di situazioni storiche, di rapporto con gli altri cuochi, di rapporto con lo spettatore che guarda eh, questi, questi quadri. Rose has lived for several years in Monte Santa Maria Tiberina and later Borgo San Sepolcro. His painting has a wide range of influences, including Piero della Francesca, an Italian Quattrocento painting. The French 19th century masters Cézanne, Corot and Gauguin and the enigmatic Italian Giorgio Morandi. He also finds himself often provoked by the masters of cinema, in particular Federico Fellini, Pierpaolo Pasolini and Peter Greenaway. He first came to Monte Santa Maria Tiberina in 1991 and immediately fell in love with Italy and the landscape, a completely fantastical, mythical world, a world he'd never seen before. Most amazing ribbons of hill and mountain the way Italians live and do things, the peace and the poetry of life. He was looking for his muse and Monte Santa Maria Tiberina quickly became it. He considers art a sacred activity. Italian art and culture fascinated him so much that he decided to settle between Tuscany and Umbria, where he is now living with his wife Wendy and two sons. A sensitive man, Rose is polyedric and eccentric, inclined by nature to an intimate study of reality, made up of pauses and silence. A style of life that you can recognize is like a style of painting. He's thought a lot about art, the way contemporary art is made, and his instinct is to change from fast art to slow art. The kind of art he makes is slow. It takes time. It's not just a quick process of one moment of emotion. Not even Rose himself knows why he cannot escape the figure in checkered pants, white apron and cook's hat. But as he acknowledges, there is something uncanny about these pictures, something that makes the most familiar seem unnervingly strange, unheimliche. In this world of cooks, there is no proportion, no Palladian symmetry. When he paints, there is a conscious effort to lose himself and have the paint take over and the needs of the paint take over. It happens, in his words, when the paint itself becomes substantial enough. Part of the whole issue in painting for him is to breathe life in something that is essentially inanimate so it starts to bloom like a flower.
Rose works in a variety of genres, from landscape and still life to the series he entitles Cooks, for which he is internationally famous. Since childhood, he's been fascinated with the spirit of cookery, and in particular, the chef. The figure that is so often dressed in white and has a tall hat and checkered trousers. He has always loved the costume of the cook, magical, theatrical, and at times suggesting the robes of a priest. Grefti, che dal nome alla galleria e all'associazione significa innesti. Per fare ciò contattiamo artisti eh, da, tutta, da tutto il mondo, uno dei quali è William Balthasar Rose, eh, artista inglese che ha vissuto eh, in Italia per diverso tempo e ha avuto stretto rapporto con eh, San Sepolcro prima e eh, Umberti Poi dove attualmente vive. Quello che abbiamo notato nelle, nelle opere di William è che il cuoco non è mai una rappresentazione fine a se stessa, ma sempre un sustrato, di, eh, un sustrato psicologico. Ogni quadro racconta in qualche modo una storia. È sempre ricorrente la mannaia e la figura di un cuoco in qualche modo giudice. Ehm... Non solo, d'altra parte abbiamo ritrovato eh, esteticamente in, alcuni, in alcune rappresentazioni di questi cuochi eh, aspetti figurativi di eh, Piero della Francesca che William ha studiato e sicuramente alcuni ehm, aspetti cromatici e compositivi di Morandi che William ha studiato. Quello che ci ha tirato da, da, dai quadri di, di, di William è un uso profondo delle, delle forme e dei colori. Le sue opere in qualche modo fanno trasferire la sua personalità che è appunto profonda e interessante è totalmente dedicata alla, alla sua arte che è la pittura But, um, but it seems to me that he's a between, I mean, it's an advantage as far as I'm concerned that he's both English and Italian in his style of painting. He's been in Italy a long time before and now he's returned here, but he's, uh, there's a kind of school of painting that is not so well known in England. The metaphysicals are well known, Chirico and Carà and then Campili and Pell. Morandi is who I think of when I see this who's on, you know, who's called a metaphysical, but he's much his own man, really. He's much more subtle, less obviously surrealist and metaphysical than Kiriko and the surrealists, obviously. And, he's, and, and that is, seems to me, that seems to me relevant to this painting. Yeah, there's several ingredients in this, and this is more typical in a way, but more complicated in some ways, than the, obviously, than the landscape. But it has that feature of the background being tipped forward a bit with a, a shallow space, which could only really have been done post-Cubism, post-Cezanne, out of whom Cubism came. Um, but it's got everything going for it. And yet, somehow, it's well organized, so it's not chaotic. It's, um, it's got a lot of ingredients mixed together, but well organized, these sort of layers and platforms, but yeah, it doesn't go back in the distance. It keeps reminding you of what's going on within a shallow a, a conceptual space, which is quite shallow, like here and so on. So it's the legacy of Cubism and yet much more colorful 
and larger. And not so many contemporary references because Picasso and Braque, of course, did that business of cigarette packets and mandolins and so on. Whereas this is more, um, not even just classical, it's ancient. William Rose's images are very expressionistic. They're meant to evoke and nurture the emotional connection we all share with natural landscapes and our deepest levels of consciousness. Rose intends for his art to open windows in people's walls, to offer images to the viewer that we can reflect on and resonate with emotionally, whether they need to heal or to expand consciousness. His use of colour, even in the most vibrant of his landscape work, seems to me to be employed with a conscious and deliberate restraint. Uh, I think he bridges the gap perfectly between memory and reality, what we remember it looking like and how it actually appears, which gives the work a very appealing romanticism. Um, many of our clients have felt an almost love at first sight connection with William's work. Uh, it can actually be quite emotional, especially when you've journeyed to Italy and you've seen the landscape and the colours and the light changing. William captures that in such a dramatic and exacting way. Rose has participated in various exhibitions since 1990, both in Italy, England and the United States.